In the quiet village of Eldergrove, a thick fog often shrouded the narrow streets as night fell. Little Lucas had always been a curious child, enamored with the stories his grandmother told him about the dark woods and ancient spirits that lurked just beyond the tree line. But it was on a particular night, with the moon barely visible through the mist, that Lucas's innocent curiosity took a sinister turn. It was past bedtime, and Lucas lay in his small, cozy bed, struggling to drift off to sleep. He had just begun to relax when a soft, familiar voice drifted through the closed door of his bedroom. It was his mother's voice, calling his name in a gentle, reassuring tone. But the voice seemed strained, almost as though it were trying to suppress a note of desperation. Lucas's eyes snapped open, his heart pounding. He crept out of bed, his small feet padding softly on the wooden floor. He approached the door, the voice growing clearer with each step. He reached for the handle, his hand trembling with both excitement and apprehension. As he turned the knob, the door creaked open slowly, revealing nothing but the empty hallway. He stepped into the darkness, his footsteps echoing off the walls. The voice continued, but now it seemed to be coming from downstairs. Lucas hesitated at the top of the staircase, the air growing colder with each step he took. The fog outside seemed to seep through the windows, enveloping the house in an eerie gloom. He descended the stairs, his small hands gripping the railing for support. The voice grew louder, more urgent. Lucas reached the bottom of the stairs and turned towards the living room, where the voice seemed to be emanating from. But the room was empty, save for the flickering light of the fireplace casting long, dancing shadows. Suddenly, he felt a hand clasp around his own. Startled, Lucas looked up to find his mother standing in the doorway, her face pale and eyes wide with a mixture of relief and fear. Her grip was firm, but her touch was cold. She looked at him with an expression of both sorrow and disbelief. I heard it too, she whispered, her voice trembling. I thought it was just my imagination, but it's been calling for you. We need to find out what's happening. She looked around, her gaze scanning the room as if expecting something to emerge from the shadows. Lucas clutched her hand tightly, the warmth of her presence a small comfort against the chill that had settled over him. Together, they moved cautiously through the house, their footsteps muffled by the thick carpet. The house seemed to groan and shift around them, the old wooden beams creaking as if responding to their fear. The voice continued to call, now a low, mournful wail that seemed to come from the very walls themselves. As they reached the basement door, Lucas's mother hesitated her hand gripping the knob with an almost superhuman strength. With a deep breath, she turned the handle and opened the door, revealing a set of steep, narrow stairs leading down into darkness. Lucas could see nothing in the pitch-black basement, but the voice grew louder and more anguished. His mother led the way, her flashlight cutting a narrow beam through the gloom. They descended the stairs, their breaths visible in the cold air. At the bottom, the beam of light revealed a scene that made Lucas's blood run cold. The basement was empty, save for a small, old-fashioned mirror hanging on the far wall, its surface dusty and cracked. The mirror seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, the glass reflecting not their faces but a dim, shadowy figure standing behind them. Lucas's mother gasped as the figure's hollow eyes met hers. The voice, now a tortured cry, resonated through the mirror. In that moment, Lucas understood. The voice had been calling for help, not from his mother, but from something trapped and malevolent within the depths of the mirror, something that had been waiting for them to come closer. Lucas's mother stumbled backward, her face pale and eyes wide with terror. It's a trap, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the rising wail. She tried to pull Lucas away, but he was transfixed by the sight in the mirror. The shadowy figure seemed to reach out with ghostly hands, its fingers stretching toward them in a desperate plea. Suddenly, the lights flickered and went out, plunging them into darkness. Lucas could hear his mother's frantic breathing beside him, and the cold, oppressive air of the basement seemed to press in on them from all sides. The wail from the mirror grew louder, a cacophony of anguish that filled the room and seemed to resonate within their very bones. As they struggled to make sense of their surroundings, Lucas felt a cold draft brush against his cheek. He turned and saw a shadowy form moving across the floor, its outline shifting and writhing like smoke. 
It was as though the darkness itself had come alive, swirling around them with malicious intent. His mother, struggling to stay calm, fumbled for her flashlight and managed to turn it back on. The beam illuminated the basement once more, revealing that the mirror had changed. The figure within it was no longer distant, but seemed to be pressing against the glass, its face twisted in a grotesque expression of pain and rage. The mirror began to crack, the surface splitting like a spider's web under the strain. With each crack, the wail grew louder, more insistent. Lucas's mother grabbed him tightly, pulling him towards the stairs, but the shadowy form on the floor began to converge on them, its movements almost hypnotic. In a desperate move, Lucas's mother picked up an old, dusty lamp from a nearby shelf and threw it at the mirror. The glass shattered into a thousand pieces, the sharp shards scattering across the floor. The instant the mirror broke, the wail cut off abruptly, replaced by a deafening silence that left their ears ringing. The shadowy form dissipated with the destruction of the mirror, its malevolent presence vanishing into the air. The basement felt lighter, though a heavy sense of dread still lingered. Lucas and his mother stood in the wreckage, their breaths coming in ragged gasps. The cold was still there, but it seemed less oppressive now. As they climbed the stairs back into the main part of the house, the fog outside began to lift, and the oppressive atmosphere of the night started to dissipate. Lucas's mother held him close, her grip firm but reassuring. They looked at each other, both understanding that they had narrowly escaped something far darker than they had imagined. The next morning, the mirror was gone, as if it had never existed. The basement was empty and clean, the lingering chill replaced by a normal coolness. They tried to tell others what had happened, but no one seemed to believe them, dismissing it as a nightmare. The village returned to its quiet existence, but Lucas and his mother knew the truth of what they had encountered. From that day forward, they stayed far from the basement, never speaking of the mirror again. The fog still came in thick, curling around the village in its mysterious way, but it was no longer a source of fear. Instead, it was a reminder of the night they had faced something beyond understanding, a reminder of the dark that can lurk just beyond the familiar, waiting for a chance to reach out. Thank you for joining us on this journey through legend and lore. Subscribe for more mythical tales and epic legends.